Canto 3 The House of the Spirit and the New Creation Alien now seemed that dim, far universe. Self and eternity alone were true. Then memory climbed to him from the striving plains, bringing a cry from once loved, cherished things. And to the cry, as to its own lost call, a ray replied from the occult supreme. For even there the boundless oneness dwells. To its own sight, unrecognizable, it lived still, sunk in its own tenebrous seas, upholding the world's inconscient unity, hidden in matters, in sentient multitude. This seed self, sown in the indeterminate, forfeits its glory of divinity, concealing the omnipotence of its force, concealing the omniscience of its soul an agent of its own transcendent will, it merges knowledge in the inconscient deep. Accepting error, sorrow, death and pain, it pays the ransom of the ignorant night redeeming by its substance nature's fall. Himself he knew, and why his soul had gone into earth's passionate obscurity to share the labor of an errant power which by division hopes to find the one. Two beings he was, one wide and free above, one struggling, bound, intense, its portion here. A tie between them still could bridge two worlds. There was a dim response, a distant breath. All had not ceased in the unbounded hush. His heart lay somewhere, conscious and alone, Far down below him, like a lamp in night. Abandoned it lay, alone, imperishable, immobile with excess of passionate will. His living, sacrificed and offered heart absorbed in adoration mystical, turned to its far-off fount of light and love. In the luminous stillness of its mute appeal, it looked up to the heights it could not see. It yearned from the longing depths it could not leave. In the centre 
of his vast and fateful trance. Halfway between his free and fallen selves, interceding twixt God's day and the mortal's night, accepting worship as its single law, accepting bliss as the sole cause of things, Refusing the austere joy which none can share, Refusing the calm that lives for calm alone, To her it turned for whom it willed to be. In the passion of its solitary dream, it lay like a closed, soundless oratory, where sleeps a consecrated, argent floor, lit by a single and untrembling ray, and an invisible presence kneels in prayer on some deep breast of liberating peace all else was satisfied with quietude this only knew there was a truth beyond All other parts were dumb in centred sleep, consenting to the slow, deliberate power which tolerates the world's error and its grief, consenting to the cosmic long delay, timelessly waiting through the patient years, her coming they had asked for earth and men. This was the fiery point that called her now. Extinction could not quench that lonely fire. Its seeing filled the blank of mind and will. Thought dead, its changeless force abode and grew. Armed with the intuition of a bliss to which some moved tranquility was the key, it persevered through life's huge emptiness, amid the blank denials of the world. It sent its voiceless prayer to the unknown. It listened for the footsteps of its hopes returning through the void immensities. It waited for the fiat of the word that comes through the still self from the supreme.